you're doing sky replacements, there's several different ways that we can go about it using different attributes of the clip itself, as well as potentially even using AI with Magic Mask. In this instance, we're not gonna be using Magic Mask or any of the studio features. If we take a look at this shot here, we can see that the sky is pretty blown out. There is no data really in the sky that we can use of any value. So we wanna do a sky replacement so that we have a little bit of detail and add a little bit more visual interest into this particular shot. So to do this, we're just working with the video that's on the timeline here, and we'll jump right over into Fusion. We do need to locate a sky replacement of some sort that we're going to be using, and I have found one, and I'll bring it into the project now. And so if we take a look, this is the sky that we're gonna be replacing in this particular area. If we take a look at what we have to work with, we obviously have a very bright sky, and we have little bits here and there that are coming through the uh, foliage. So we'll need to try to make sure that you know we get something that's cohesive that will show through all of these as well. And this is one limitation with a lot of AI solutions is we could get it to pick out this whole area, but it won't pick out these little bits here and there amongst all of the bushes or the, the leaves. So I feel like this, uh, the way in which I'm going to show you is actually probably a better way than using things like AI, Magic Mask, the different AI tools that are there. Let's first name these. So just selecting a particular node that we want to name. So we're gonna be uh, this runner here and then the sky just so that when I'm referencing them, I can say the sky node and, and such. All right, so first let's get this particular, let's get both of these together so we can see what it looks like. So we'll take the sky and we're just going to drag from the out of the sky to the out of the runner. And we'll take a look and we can obviously, it's just the sky because the sky's laying over top. There are infusion blend modes as most people know them as. Infusion, they're referred to as apply modes and all of the different modes that you would typically see. One of those modes is referred to as darken. And what darken does is it takes very bright pixels and it makes them transparent, allowing the other element to shine through. So that's actually what I'll do is I'll come here to darken. And what we can see is obviously the sky has been replaced, but other you know pieces of the shot have also been replaced. So the reflection down here, uh, when he is actually in the uh, light, he has been replaced part, parts of down here. So it just overall doesn't look very good, but this is the start to this whole um, process. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be working on making a mat or a mask of the different area in which we want to kind of keep this selection or the sky in. So to do this, because we are working with the brightness values of the shot, we're actually gonna be using a luma keyer. Luma keyer is going to use the luminosity, which is the brightness of the shot. So to open that up, we're gonna hold down shift and hit spacebar and type loom and we'll get the Luma here, and we'll go right out of the run into the Luma here, and then we can view the Luma here up here. Then over in the inspector, we're actually going to be playing around with this slider right here. The slider is going to allow us to select different bits. So let's quickly go in and change that slider so that we just really get the bright bits and they shine through pretty strong. So I would say that that's pretty good. Uh, we're getting a little bit of the chest and the reflection, but overall, I would say that that's probably a very good uh, selection. All right. The other thing that we can do is we can make what's referred to as a garbage mat. So the garbage mat is going to be a mat that we're just going to throw anything that is uh, a part of the garbage mat. So to do that, we're just going to click right here and grab a polyline and a polygon, excuse me, and we're going to uh, right click, drag. So we're just right click, drag, whoops. Right click, drag onto here, which then gives us a drop down, and we grab the garbage mat. The reason why I did that is because there are several different inputs here. And so if I do that, then I can make sure that I connect to the correct one. So the garbage mat is going to contain everything that we don't want. So I'm just gonna zoom out by holding Commander Control and Mouse Wheel. And we're just going to go like this. We kind of want, you know, the little bits that are right there because those are between the leaves. Sorry about my phone. Uh, we'll go like this. Let me actually mute that. 
All right. So now that we have done all of that, now I just want to go back and forth. And if I view the actual shot here and I click on the mask itself, we can see the boundaries that it's going across. And I just want to make sure that nothing throughout here uh, comes through. So we can see that portion of his head might be coming in. Looks like it's keyed, but I'll, I'll move it because I want to show you how something works. So, so when I brought in the polygon mask, it made one keyframe right there, as you can see, right? So if I go right there, it's a keyframe. And then over, over here, it's showing that the animation is selected. So what that actually does, if we were to manipulate any portion of our mask, it's going to animate for different frames. So if I come in a little bit, so like let's say right here, right here, we need, we want this to slightly move. Over the course of between this keyframe and that keyframe, we're gonna see that the mask sort of moves. The best way to work with, with uh, whenever you're like rotoing or anything like this, is now we have two different points. If something needs to be adjusted, we like to come to the middle of those two points and then adjust accordingly. And hopefully, the animation that is already made between those points kind of helps out. So we're not going every single frame manipulating the mask. Just a little trick to kind of save time on that front. All right, so it's looking good. I actually would probably move this up slightly <clears throat> like that. I think the rest of this is perfectly fine. So I'm liking how all of that is now. And so now if we look at just our mask here, we can see that we only really have up in the trees up there, as you can see. Now we are going to uh, add everything together. So to do this, we first need to take this uh, Luma here and we need to take our runner shot and we need to use all of the information coming out of the, lure key, the Luma here as an alpha. So to do this, we're just going to come up here, grab our mat control. We can also shift spacebar and type in mat, get the mat control. And we're going to go directly in runner first, and then the Luma here second. From here, if we click on the Luma here and view it up here, we'll come over into the inspector and we're going to combine. We're gonna combine alpha. And then if we come down here, we're going to post multiply image and then we can invert. So now we have up here, it's all cut out. There is, sometimes you might want to play around with this a little bit. I just turned off the checkerboard so you can see this. If this is too messy, you can go in. Let's uh, move this over a little bit. We can go in and use a, an erode. And then holding down command or control, we can get fine adjustments on this erode, and then we can clean up it just ever so slightly. And then that would probably be pretty good for my erode. We wanna do very little, as little as possible. Something like that, so off, on, get a little bit of that gone. And now we can take all of this information that we have so far, we'll bring our sky back, bring our sky back and we're just going to connect this up right there. And now if we view this, we can see that now we have the sky back there. If we really wanted to, we could go into the sky, shift spacebar, transform, and we would be able to resize this and bring it up here like that. I'm actually going to turn off the uniform size and shrink down so that we get better clouds, something like that to kind of get it to fit in. But there's one issue with what we've got so far. Obviously we needed to get it to fit in a bit more, but there's a bigger issue than that. If we watch this through and we look up here in the sky, we can see that the sky is a static shot and nothing is really moving. Right, the sky's not moving with how all of the mountains are moving, right? Other thing too, I think after this mask or map control, I'm going to put in, or actually before it, 
right here. I'm going to put in a blur after the erode and then just make this like 0 0.5 to get to soften this edge up just a little bit so it blends between the two. But if we take a look between here, we can see that the 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 mountains are slightly moving around because the camera's bouncing, but the background is kind of just sliding all over the place. There is no, it's not locked. They're not locked together and they're not moving together. So that's something that we would probably want to correct. And so the easiest way to correct that in the transform here, what we'll do is we'll just double click on the center because we want to track the center position. And then we go modify with track position and that's a modifier. So we'll go into modifiers. And then the big thing here is we have a source and the source is currently the sky and that's not what we want. We actually are going to want the runner. So if we just grab the runner node, so let's click on the transform, let's go back to here, click and drag and bring it up into here and release. Now it will be the runner that we're gonna be using to get our tracking data. So <clears throat> now that we have that selected, I'm going to bring both the runner in both of these and select fit, fit, close, shift this over ever so slightly. And I'm then going to click on this little box right here and I can move this around. <clears throat> and what I'm looking at on the left viewer, I can see like where I'm looking at because on the right viewer, it's kind of hard to, to get an idea of like what I'm actually looking at here. But I want to track the mountains and for some reason with this tracker i'm not actually seeing there we go now we are all right so now we actually just want to kind of track these mountains and find like a good spot to track let's try right in there let's come back over to here and now from um, my playhead is currently right here i'm just going to uh, track this way whoops that was the wrong track button. Let's go back into kind of where I see all of that. Let's pick a spot. Let's pick right there. So quickly on how this tracker works, the inner square here is going to be the pattern in which we're going to be tracking. The outer square is going to be where we look for that pattern. So we look for the pattern, we find it, lock onto it, go to the next frame, Within this box, we can look for the pattern again and then just position. So if you're working with really fast paced motion, you might want to increase the size of this box or change the size of the pattern. The big thing is that you don't wanna make the search area too big because it might find a very similar pattern somewhere within the shot and then it'll be jumping all over the place instead of just locking it down to a relative area close to where the previous track point was. So that's how that works. So let's come over to modifiers. And now I'm going to, from this point, track forward. And as we can see here, we're going to track every frame and it's going to be looking for this particular pattern throughout the shot. And it's working off of the sky. So now if we take a look at what we have, I see a little bit of craziness going on right here. So I'm guessing the tracker potentially moved. Oh, the beginning track points are up here. I see, I see. So let's actually remove those quick. You probably won't have that as an issue. So we'll just delete that so that, that track doesn't look so horrendous. Um, and so yeah, now we have this kind of tracked, but we might not be looking at the exact area in which we want. So what we'll do is we'll come back to the modifier and down here we have offsets. The offsets we can use to manipulate the image until we get something that, you know, is looking a little bit better for our sky. Obviously, I don't want the bottom of the, our shot that has like the golden area. So we'll pop, pop that behind and I'll just bring this kind of over. Maybe something like that will look significantly better. So this is almost done. The only thing we have to do is just blend them together. But before that, let me tell you about Colorfront.
Colorfront's new offering, the Streaming Server Mini, is a brand new software solution to stream directly from popular editing, compositing, and color grading applications. Colorfront has developed this software from the ground up to provide the most color accurate streaming solution regardless of viewing device. The Streaming Server Mini is able to stream reference quality footage securely and privately while maintaining a low latency to multiple clients at the same time. All streaming sessions are private and encrypt it, requiring an invitation, allowing you and your team to collaborate in just a few clicks. Colorfront is currently offering a free trial so you can try the streaming server mini for yourself. This is a great opportunity to enhance your workflow and improve your streaming quality. And thanks again, Colorfront, for sponsoring this video. All right, so now all we're gonna do to actually blend these together to get them to fit a bit better is because remember over here in the merge, we were using the darken. We can just use this gain control to blend both of those shots together to get them to work a little bit better. So as we bring this down, we can see that now we're starting to really blend them together and get them to look pretty freaking good. The only other thing that you might want to do is if you want your sky to be a little punchier or a tint of something different, you could easily just right here, just get a color corrector, add that in, and then you could add in a little bit of what say contrast, ever so slight contrast. I think that's looking pretty good and it's fitting in the shot pretty well. And overall, if we take a look at where we were versus where we are now, I feel like those skies are looking much, much better. Like I said, we're just adding in a little bit of detail up there, so it just doesn't look like a white block uh, in the sky. Adding a little bit of clouds, uh, when it's time for the colorist to actually come back and do something, they can manipulate that you know, even more so to get it to look much, much better. Our big thing was to get, you know, as you can see in here in the sky, you can slightly see that you know we're getting a little bit of those blues from the background and whatnot, right? So you can see them in the background back there. Getting a little bit of those blues and all. And once it's time for the colorist to take over, they could really make this shot look much, much better now that there is some detail up there to work with, or should I say just texture at this point. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how we would go about adding in a sky replacement, tracking it so that any type of bouncing with the camera, obviously this was a bit handheld or like on a gimbal or something probably, but we want to also add that in so it doesn't look like the background is just super static and the other shot is sliding around a bit. So hopefully you guys learned something with this one. If you're interested in learning more about DaVinci Resolve and different tools and techniques like this, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do this kind of stuff all the time here. If you wanna know more in-depth and longer form uh, explanations and more in-depth projects, definitely take a look at the website. I have a bunch of certification courses over there as I am a Blackmagic training partner. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until next one, guys. Peace.